Okay, guys, I have to keep it real. I just came back from a trip from two weeks of being with my sister in North Carolina, and suddenly it hit me. There were so many things that I wanted to share that I realized there were so many things I didn't feel like writing or blogging or just tweeting about. So first of all, I'm just going to do some uh, shameless product plugging that I really enjoy. My niece, Alexis Skye, who is 14, so fabulous, getting tall and beautiful, she um, had a charcoal facial cleanser from, um, I don't think it was like a name brand, but it inspired me to go and buy, buy this um, Beauty 360 from CVS because I figure it's good for blemishes and I always constantly have the... Uh, the cystic acne as an adult at 38 years old. Yes, you can have adult acne and it's a pain in the ass. It really comes down to diet too. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning it's mostly about too much dairy, which I'm lactose intolerant, but I drink my milk anyway and I love my ice cream. But really it, at a point in your life when you get older, your body changes and everything reacts to you differently. And so I've noticed if I, act too, I, hate, I eat too much spicy and or greasy foods like Wendy's or pizza or Chinese food, all of a sudden I start getting the pimpolation, which I hate. But anyway, I washed with this today and I really, really enjoy it. And I hope that, because it says it purifies pores, excellent for oily skin, which is mine, and it's dermatologist tested oil free. So they say compare to Biore Deep Pore Charcoal Cleanser. So I know there's this whole charcoal face uh, cleanse craze since all those people who've been using the masks and peeling them off and saying, wow, wow, wow. And there's been spoofs and memes. But I figure this is as good as I'm going to be able to do for what I could afford for my extra care bucks and my 30% coupon. So I went, but I just, I highly recommend. And this line too is good because I bought the sensitive phone cleanser and I finished it while it was away. And I like that, how it fell on my skin too, especially when you can't afford, you know, proactive, which I don't know if it would have worked because I didn't use it longer than a month. So I don't know if it would have helped my skin. But um, generally, I go to a dermatologist who I liked and the cream that he gave me, which was a, basically a type of benzoyl peroxide cream. Um, it did work for the cystic acne, but I also realized when I drink less water, when I'm stressed um, and when I have too much sugar or milk in my diet, I really do start to break out even more. And uh, let's face it, around that time of the month, female to female, we all know that acne is just going to happen anyway because your bodies, your hormones are going crazy. And as I get older and I'm told that I'm at my peak at 38, that's probably why my body goes crazy. But I just wanted to shout that out. And then also, I really love, since my mother works at part-time at Rite Aid, she got this product. She gets all the product that gets pushed away or, you know, put on sale for clearance or no longer uh, produced or whatever. So they, they get the last bits and they mark them down to like, four dollars or whatever well she got me this oil of Olay acne hater and that does help me in the morning especially when I am having those because all these this used to be horrible like two weeks ago it was really bad inflamed and I kept picking at it and I should have been but it's going down but I was using this a lot after I used all of my um facial uh, foam cleanser from clean 360 so I moved to this oil Olay every now and then and I love it because normally I'm in um I used to use the uh what was that line it's not Alme. It's another line that I used to use that was good for um, chocolate skin, basically, because with the melanin, you get the blackheads a lot more. You get, um, especially when your hair, hair is starting to grow like little things of hair and you pluck them and then it starts to scar if you pick at it, whatever. Also, I use a lot of Mary Kay moisturizer, too. That works with my glow. Mm hmm. Um, but that was just, I felt like bragging about that because I feel like those are things that you can actually use. But I don't know if this oil of lay is still in use, but if it is, go try it if you have acne like me. Also, I just felt like shouting out my cute little hologram bag that people seem to love that I got off of a uh, offer up. Some guy was just selling stuff and it was like $20. Um, so yeah, it was fun. It's very cool. It helped me carry all my toiletries. Well, I don't go around with toilet paper, but I was downstairs and I needed some for the upstairs bathroom, so that's why I had it. But anyway, inside my bag, I also recommend for us black folk who need moisturizing in a hair and I'm going through a dandruff phase for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the weather, stress, whatever, but I'm, I'm probably going to have to get on like hair and shoulder, head and shoulders for a bit. But in general, this line by Palmer's, the olive oil formula, has been working for my hair. I spent one month off of it before I got my hair done last time and... My hairstylist was like, what is going on with your scalp? What is going on with your hair? Everything was dry. I was lazy because I normally always get Indian hemp oil to grease my scalp. And even that wasn't helping. So this line works. But the problem is everyone stopped carrying it for some reason. So I had to go to like um, off of Stenton and Washington Lane in Sheltonham area to get in the uh, hair supply store to get this line because they don't carry it in the CVS or Rite Aids anymore. And they had a leave-in 
hair conditioner that I love that they didn't have when I got all this and the, and the conditioner and the shampoo, but they didn't have the spray. So I'm wondering if they just were out or if they're slowly trying to play me and discontinue my line of something that works for my hair. Other than that, some of the Pantene line is good for hair like mine, like coarse and processed. But um, in general, I really can't wait for the summer because I want to go back to my braids. But we'll see what happens because usually the growing out period is hard for me and I end up cutting it again and I get impatient, whatever. So we'll see. But I highly recommend anything Palmer's olive oil formula sheen, uh, molds, molding uh, foam for all my, my sisters out there who like to mold their hair a lot instead of actually doing it because I'm lazy and I'll admit it. I'm a big wig person now as I've gotten older. I've been less self-conscious about it because some days I just don't freaking care. Um, then also, I'm a big fan of any Arm & Hammer deodorant, whether it be sensitive, unscented, baby powder. For some reason, as I've gotten older too, I get smellier. And the hormones that I have that I cannot control are off the off the chain. So sometimes I have to get a men's formula, but I've noticed that when my mom has bought me this or the sensitive line, it does work. Um, so yeah, Arm & Hammer. So I'm shouting this out just because I feel like if somebody sees this and knows these people who manufacture the ones that I can't find anymore, you can uh, hook a sister up on Twitter. Girly Virgo 78 Holla. Um, and then what else? My sister bought me this line for my birth or Christmas. Bliss. And this is the body butter. And then she also got me, it was like a pineapple. It's like a pineapple. I meant to get it. The foam cleanser. Pineapple and something else mixed, but it smells really good. It's very light. Um, and this stuff works. It doesn't smell, but um, it does make my feet stay moisturized for a while until I, you know, until it's not. Because basically I need a pedicure because bottom of my feet look like scaly al alligator scales. It's gross. Anyway, um, I think you love how much I'm sharing right now. And uh, let's see. What else did I want to show you? Oh, well, I just want to brag, too, because my aunt is working for the Department of the Army and um, she sometimes has to go to Afghanistan for clerical duty or whatever's and on assignment. And she brought back these lovely scarves from Afghanistan Market. Um, and they're very pretty. This is my other one I got. Because my aunt loves me. This is the aunt that hooked me up at the Hampton Inn when she used to work for it and got me and my two friends at the time. We were going away to a cruise, carnival cruise, and we were, we were boarding out of New Orleans. And she helped us get a room for like $30 for that night so cheap also shout out to Beyonce because I didn't even know she had any more perfume but this one seems to rock my world the most besides um her pulse sake fragrance because I don't really care for any other scents that she has out like the heat line I'm not a fan um I used to be strictly JLo when I went perfume and then I started to like Fergie's first one um but I'm starting to kind of even wean off of perfume because now I'm starting to like the smell of just natural oil and stuff so eventually I'll probably I'm just gonna go right back to that and just like dab oil everywhere um, because so, now I notice my skin sometimes is sensitive when I spray it on my wrist and then put it on my neck it suddenly I break out it's very weird but this does smell good this is her rise fragrance formula and uh, I highly recommend it just because of the bottle Isn't that cool it's like it's almost like her girls rule the world video because she had that whole kind of weird um, what was that designer she was Terry T Terry Muglay um, that whole like kind of animated rock star queen faux crown type thing going on. So yeah, she was going through that whole period during um, the Sasha Fierce album. So maybe that's where this is from. I have no idea when she released this, but I love it. So good deal. Um, and then other than that, side away from the product, now that I've come back from being away, I've kind of had a need to, oh, shout out to Fourth and, Fourth and John boys. Hey. Their podcast is on SoundCloud as well as YouTube. Um, my boy Iraq, who basically I've met through Twitter and met him one time at a, I think it was an off season or preseason um, practice. Um, he's very cute, but he's married and he's got kids, but he's very, very cool. And he's underground, but he won't be for long because he's starting to get a local buzz. And on Twitter, he got a shout out from um, uh, Brian Dawkins for making a video declaring why he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame, even though Brian Dawkins didn't make it. Boo hiss. Um, but I, I like them and I bought the t-shirt cause they offered them. And I also feel like their show is going to become bigger. And, uh, when they, when it does, I want to be a part of it. They have invited me to go to a, a taping of the, of their, um, 
podcast, but every time I thought about it, I just either didn't have the money to go or, you know, gas wise to go because I wanted to make sure I didn't drive all the time unless I could afford it. And then, um, or I just didn't have the time, <laughs> you know, it was one of those things when they take, by the time they set up the podcast, I'm probably coming from somewhere and, and if not in like dinner mode and don't feel like moving. So I'd rather just call into the show and they love when I call into the show. I call into 97.5 all the time, AJ. I'm the only girl, AJ, that calls in. Most of the guys that are from Jersey or whatever call in and that one guy from West Philly. But anyway, just shouting them out because Fourth and John is fun to listen to. They're very sarcastic, funny guys. Just love their sports, love their birds like I do. And uh, so I bond with them and a host of other friend of a friends off of Twitter. Twitter can be a very good um, source of networking as well as just community. You just feel like people hear you on Twitter a lot faster than they do um, on Facebook. Because Facebook's more become a family thing because now Facebook is now discovered by every other family member who doesn't really like the computer. And so you keep your Facebook in respect to your family members who you add, if you do add them. Um, but you really don't get on it like that to talk to them. You mostly just call and or email, inbox, whatever. Um, my other thoughts were, since it's going to be April, I've been two months unemployed. So I've been bored, as you can tell. <laughs> and I've realized that that time of not having a job is really scary. But it's also, thank God for my mother. Because if I didn't have my mom, I'd probably be... I would have been unemployed for a while and I probably would have been living with my sister because I wouldn't know what else to do. Um, but my sister, I love her to death, but I think I realized I would definitely would not would be, uh, be a mother, especially not in the military. I think that lifestyle is only for those who can deal with it. You kind of have no choice if you have to be married to be on the base. So my sister spent years and years with three children on and off bases. Her The best base she had was in Italy. In my opinion, they could have went to Hawaii, but then they ended up not able to go. So in their last like couple of years, they have left the housing they have now is off base. So and it's been built from the bottom up. So they'll probably be there for a while. Um, if there's a reason for me to want to go back to North Carolina, I would definitely stay with my sister until I got my my funds together. And then I would want to work somewhere where we were um, last Tuesday. We're celebrating my sister's 44th birthday on Monday. And Tuesday, we went downtown Raleigh. Um, near the University of New York, North Carolina um, area, and they had nice apartments. So I thought, hmm, I'd rather live where it's kind of youthful and fun and go see my sister when I felt like it. So that could be a possible nesting egg, um, if nothing else works out with me in Philly, which is, I'm fine with it. I mean, if we could finally find someone to sell the house real quickly and get my mom out of here, she would do it. But it's still hard when you're my mom's divorcee. And, uh, you know, I'm 38 living with her again, only because... My funds, as well as my car, fell through and um, wasn't able to maintain my funds. So I had to move out last year, even though I loved my apartment. I had two good apartments. I really should have stayed in the first one. I've learned not to jump so quickly when things aren't comfortable. So I should have just stayed. Um, but And then I was forced into pleading Chapter 7 bankruptcy because I was getting sued by Discover Card for not paying my debt. Um, so I had to file for that. I had to go through a whole formal, like, you know... I don't know if it's, I don't know what they call it. I guess they call it a, he gave me a, my lawyer gave me a word for it. But anyway, I had to pay him out of my 401k, the lawyer, just so I'd get everything done so that it could be set up. And it's a whole another like three month process before I find out if I've been cleared of my unsecured debt so that I can move on and reestablish credit again and then just not go crazy with it. Um, but life is about getting knocked down and getting up. And I suddenly felt moved this morning when I was driving to go get milk and um, I had to buy the cleanser. And Alessia Cara is like one of my favorite pop artists out right now, as far as young singers who really don't get on my nerves. You know, I love Ariana Grande too, but she's way too crazy, like overly produced and popped out. You know, I'm sure if she really loves the business, she might end up being a really good singer later in life when she takes out all the fluff. Of course, I'm sure all these girls do pop first because they know it pays a lot. So when they want to do what they really want to do, they'll do it. But I think Alessia Cara will be around for a long time because that kid can sing. And I believe she's very real. Like she doesn't feel the need to dress herself up all the time. And I, she's on that same vein with Notori Kelly, all those very modest girls who are out here just kind of just trying to be artists and not trying to be TNA and cover their lack of talent. So... And even for the TNA girls like Rihanna and Britney, all there and Beyonce out there, I do feel like that Beyonce has become more conscious because she can afford to be. 
Um, if she, she probably wouldn't be conscious if it was going to ruin her career, but she can afford to do it. And she's a Virgo, so she plans everything and she's focused. And I will always love Queen Bee. I don't care what nobody says. Um, if I met her, I wouldn't call her Queen Bee. But I think that sometimes she does irk me too, only because the marketing monster that's behind her can sometimes make her very uh, over overexposed. And sometimes that gets annoying. But she's about to have twins, so she might be gone for a little bit this time because she really was going to have to recover for these two babies. Um, but I wish her the luck. God bless her as always. I think she's a very great individual. But I do believe the marketing machine can be her worst enemy at times. But anyway, back to Alessia Cara. Scars to Your Beautiful Song has really awakened my spirit in more ways than one. And I don't know why. I mean, I know we all say we're fans and there's some things that move you and you don't know why. But sometimes I just feel like her song is almost like a modern day pop gospel for the young girls of today that have so much pressure on them to be perfect, to be this and that. And it's just a lie, you know, and we don't know it till we get older and we can read through the signs or read between the lines and read this and see the signs. But I think with Alessia Cara, I think she's more like this is probably how I always how she always rolled. And she just happened to be lucky to find people behind her who believed in her vision and allowed her to say what she has to say. It's good to start off your rookie year as an artist like that because she's nowhere to go but up. She can get sexy. She can do whatever she wants now, but she's probably still always going to have a message. Um, kind of like a modern day Alanis Morissette, basically, because Alanis Morissette had a message before she even probably wanted to be a pop star and she didn't realize it till Jag a Little Pill. But I even had to text my friend Andre, a.k.a. Boy Wonder, if you haven't heard of Boy Wonder all over the city performing. He's a very talented guitarist. He has a band. Um, I think he does something called Element K as well. He t he tours. He does ha he does um he does happy hours. Well, he probably does happy hours, but not as a performer. Um, but he's very talented, and I actually text him out of nowhere because I just got this inspiration. I said, and I think it's because our show, me uh my my friend Jennifer Farrell, who's a belly dancer, decided to put up this showcase called Sabroso, and we did it three weeks ago, and I was MC, which was fun. It was nerve wracking, but it was fun, and it made me realize like I kind of want to perform again. And I don't know in what shape, like I kind of like being on the sidelines, but I also want to be involved. So MC is probably the best position for me. So she's my bestie of like almost 18 years now. So she kind of would know that that, well, not 18. Hello. What am I? It's like 16 years. She knows my ins and outs, my ups and downs. And she knows I do harbor my talent too close to my chest and I do have a lot of callings. I'm very multi-talented. I'm just also very lazy. <laughs> so I probably would be doing a lot more if I wasn't so lazy, but we'll see. Um, anyway, going back to Sabroso, basically Andre was part of that show and he, he had a, he does covers and him and this girl, I forget her name, but she did the cover, uh, Closer by Chainsmokers and Halsey and, um, Halsey, excuse me. So it made me think, I'm like, I always wanted to sing with Andre, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. And I also didn't know how long, how much I could commit to it, being that I know his schedule is crazy because he's always trying to get gigs, you know, it's his lifestyle. So I kind of text him out of nowhere on an impulse after coming home, after hearing Scars to Your Beautiful again. And I just realized, I'm like, I got to study those lyrics because I know next time I do karaoke, I want to do that song particularly because I really feel it resonates with me, especially now, especially after seeing my sister's kids and looking at my two nieces and how... One is definitely a lot more confident than the, uh, than the other, but they're both beautiful girls. I just realized me as a youth, I probably wasn't aware that I was beautiful. And, you know, my niece is 14, so she's going to go through the awkward phase regardless. But I don't feel like she's even aware of how beautiful she really is. And not even just looks wise, but just a very intelligent person. My sister was always a smart person, but she was also very introverted, very shy, um, a little high strung. So I... I pray that due to the DNA that we, they, we don't pass down that Alexa will be like me and be so self-conscious that she doesn't allow anything to let her talent out. But yet her talent is screaming. She's always drawing. She's always doing some kind of sketch. She's always uh, working on her saxophone or music ability. She likes to sing. I don't know if she's gotten up and sung in public in a while since she did a Christmas show and she got real self-conscious. But I just hope that confidence doesn't eat at her or doesn't go away because I hope that she'll start singing as she gets older that she can do it and that kids this generation can do anything they have access to so much more information than ever before and in a faster rate and so I think that's what makes my sister so stressed out because women are 
we're the bearers of everything. And you just don't want to see your kids get out of control so quickly and miss their purpose. So being a parent is hard. And I think with my sister, I realized how hard it truly is to be a focused, multitasking parent. It's just impossible. And that's why I don't want children. But I'm not against it. If it happens, whatever. I'd have to, one, be really in love with the guy that's going to give me the children because I don't see myself adopting. I mean, I'd rather adopt a dog, honestly. I hate to say it. Sorry if that sounds harsh, but I just, some people just know they're not called. And I'd rather be that responsible adult who doesn't believe in bringing life in and not taking care of it. So there, that's my reasoning for not having children. I'd rather be a responsible adult. There's too many kids brought in this world that aren't cared for it, right in our country, as opposed to overseas, people who adopt them from like Haiti and, and Malawi. Um, take care of our kids here. Protect our girls, especially those D.C. girls. We don't know why all of a sudden they're all disappearing. Somewhere the security is broken down and somewhere the parents are become, becoming lackluster protectors. That's why these kids can just walk away and then end up being being snatched by greedy, nasty men. Or just in general, people who want to make a buck off of you. I mean, sex trafficking is real. My uh, former roommate at UArts experienced a, a, a pretty much a year-long situation where people above her happened to be sex trafficking a woman and bringing men in to rape her. And it was going on for a while and she couldn't sleep. And so... It finally got somewhat resolved, but it's probably still going on on the, on the low. They probably just switched location. But it's horrible. You think that slavery died, and then you hear that this human trafficking crap is happening all over the world. And it's serious. And there's so many sins now that are being exposed, especially with the hand of our presidency being switched and everyone's vulnerabilities are being shown more and more. Now everybody's just committing violence just to commit fear. Um... Well, not to commit fear, but to create fear out of their own fear. And they're putting it onto those people. So my thoughts are with scars to, to your beautiful was just basically saying, I feel like you can't control what's going on in the world. So you want the females in your life, the young, the old, middle age, like my, well, not middle age, but like, you know, about to be 40 soon on the brink, should I say, um, to be more aware of their power. You know, Wonder Woman's about to come out in June, the movie, and, and if that doesn't make women feel more powerful about what they have as, you know, the ruling of healthcare and women's rights is starting to be questioned and put on the line and Planned Parenthood being an, a problem to some of these, this new administration and all these things. This is the age of the woman where we can take charge and not even realize it. So I think that Scars to Your Beautiful is one of those songs that encapsulates all the things I was just speaking about, all the fears, all the sensationalism in Twitter, all the hyped headlines, all the the lies being told about what's really true and what's not regarding us as humans and, and what we can or can't do and who, who can do this and who can own that and who can say that and who can't say that. We need women to basically bring it to the center again because we are the center of the world. We bring the life into the world. So we have the power to change a lot of the things that are going on right now. And I want my two nieces to be aware that they don't have to feel burdened, but they also don't have to feel like they don't have a right. You know, my niece, Kiara, who's eight, is a very strong little girl. And even though sometimes I do notice she doesn't respect authority, I, I love her I love her spunk and her spitfireiness because we know that we don't have to worry about her later in life. I feel like she's one type of person that she will literally probably kick somebody's ass if they try to mess with her. Whereas Alexa, I wonder if her emotions will speak for her too much. And I know that that was my problem growing up. And that's why I was a little socially awkward. And probably why I found out later that I might have been diagnosed for bipolar because I probably, you know... As I got older and your body's changing and you're eating differently and your moods are going crazy, you know, they probably led to a false positive diagnosis of bipolar. But I really think, honestly, I just had a lot of anxiety and I was a hyper child and I also had a lot of talent, but I didn't know how to use it because I still went to auditions when I was supposedly depressed and I still dreamed of being an actress. And now I'm more obsessed with the idea of corresponding on red carpets and being on the radio. At some point, I know in my life I always will need an outlet. And I think every person can be diagnosed bipolar who doesn't let their energy out in a creative way. And 
You know, that's why it's nerve wracking with this administration about them and possibly defunding the arts. Because if you think that people don't need the arts now, (laughs) you have to be crazy. But it's all about the dollar. And at the end of the day, when individuals see something that's threatened and they believe in it, they'll support it financially, even if the government doesn't. So it doesn't necessarily mean that everything's going to die because the government doesn't want to back it. But it's just too hard to be an American person in the world today and not be aware of anything that's going on. You can't walk around with blinders anymore because people are putting crap in your face and they're saying things. And even if, you know, I had a conversation with my Republican brother in law who basically made sense about a lot of the things he had a problem with, with regarding Obama and Clinton and Trump. And he made a lot of sense on a very neutral field, basically stating the obvious And it's very easy to be caught up as a Democrat to want to blame Republicans for everything when really we're kind of our own enemy as human beings, regardless of political affiliation. We as human beings have contributed to a lot of the drama we've had in this world. You know, if (laughs) now the one thing I've learned from watching the Moana movie with my, with my, my nieces and nephew is that if you treat the earth bad, you can't expect it to vouch for you when you need it the most. So you know, the environment, you know, global warming and, and all the random things, acts of violence that are happening. That's not because it's just happening. It's because we put that negativity and lack of faith in ourselves. And that's what the result has become. A maddening, you know, anarchy society, atheist society that doesn't believe that God is in control. And so because of that, our ego has basically caused all of our ruin. And it doesn't necessarily mean also the world is at loss. We can fix it. We are the we are the builders. But you also have to realize we wouldn't have gotten that blueprint to build if we didn't have a higher being above us that put down the blueprint. So until then, we will always have this imbalance and we will always have uh, warring nations and warring ideals until we all realize that it has nothing to do with us. And until then, we're always going to be out of control. And on that note, I looked at the timestamp here and it's 27 minutes. I really didn't plan on talking that long. I was just going to plug product, but then I thought I felt like blogging. So there you go. It may be long, but I love anybody who's watching this and anybody who approves of it and whoever disapproves of it. Feel the need to comment. If you don't, I put this public on purpose. Just my thoughts. Just like Jay-Z says, just my thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. All right, be good to each other. Love the Lord. Even if you don't love the Lord, love somebody other than yourself. Hug on somebody. Thank God for life or just be thankful for life. And uh, take care. AJ out.